Uh, my name is Jonathan Bernasso, and just a little bit about me before we dig into the agenda. Um, I've been in solar real estate investor since about 2015. So going on over nine years now, I've personally helped about 1,100 homeowners go solar. Um, and now we're seeing a lot of batteries and roofing that we're going to touch on as well. My team in the last four to five years has done over 7,000 installations across the country. I've worked at some of the top nationwide solar companies with Cynthia. I think we've known each other, what, 15 years? Um, so we've worked at Sunrun Corporate. We've worked at Tesla Solar City, um, and now we're working at Power. So we'll be best served to like answer your questions and help you guys out. And um, yeah, I also do a lot of speaking and training, and this is what I enjoy to do. Cynthia. Yeah, so same. I've been in the industry for almost nine years, have worked for some of the largest providers in the U.S., like Solar City, Tesla, Sunrun. We both represent the company Power, like Jonathan said. And one of the things we've been doing most recently is partnering with real estate agents, bringing solar education to real estate, and just really being the best power partners we can. And it's something we're really passionate about, um, about just keeping the industry updated so that we can work together to best serve the client. Um, so that's what we're here to do today. So, And I have an identical twin brother. Oh, yes. We're the solar twins, so Cynthia has to put up with two of us. <laughs> It's just FYI. They're like my brothers, so we're really kind of like triplets. Um, but yeah, between the three of us, um, just tons of experience. We've served many clients, especially here in the IE, Southern California especially. So, all right, awesome. So we're going to go through the agenda really quick just to um, set the stage and let you know what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to go through some obstacles we know that realtors face in the real estate industry, and we're gonna talk about electricity rising rates. We'll give you guys a California solar market update so you know what's going on in the world of solar in California. We'll talk a little bit about solar, um, how solar works. We will go over some solar contract types that are common out there and how to di differentiate between those t uh, few contracts. And then we're gonna discuss how a buyer um, how to tell if a buyer will actually save with solar because that's what's really important when you're working with a buyer and you come across a solar system are they even going to save how do we know that how can you tell so we're gonna go through that and we're gonna talk about benefits for homeowners when they choose to go solar we will share a referral program at the end and our contact information as well so so real quick um, we know that solar can be a challenge. Has anyone faced some challenges, obstacles, company went out of business, liens, tax liens, homeowners gotten a bad deal? A little bit, yeah. So we, we understand that. So we want to help be the person that you partner with to look through those contracts, to talk to the buyers, to be able to explain it well. We just want to be your free nationwide solar partner. Um, if you believe that solar and batteries and EVs are the future, I think partnering and bringing those solutions to your clients is super important. It's likely the biggest purchase that your clients will make on their homes is solar and batteries. Um, does anyone know what percent of electric car sales in California are electric? Of, I'm sorry, total car sales. It's like a third. Over a third of the cars being bought by your clients, they're going to be charging in their house. So it's just important to think of as you're um, out there in the real estate industry. When you look at weather events, California, Texas, fires, the climate, um, there's a lot of factors that are affecting solar. And whether you like it or not, whether you believe in solar or not, whether you think climate change is real or not, the reality is, is that I, I truly believe one in five homes in our lifetime will have solar. And if you look at homes on the MLS, I'm sure you guys are seeing multiple homes every time you're pulling reports that have solar now. So I wanna share a quick story before we dive into the fun stuff. Um, as you look at these homes in Palm Springs, Coachella Valley, anyone stayed in an Airbnb in Palm Springs before? Yeah, I just got back. A lot of the homes there have solar, why? Because it's hot as hell <laughs> and they're running the AC and those Owners don't want to pay for it, right? Um, and then this picture on the right, I've helped about three or four of those homes in a block in Fontana go solar. So the quick story I want to share is I walked into a Palm Springs open house next to my buddy's Airbnb. 
And the agent was very professional. He started going through some of the features of the home, and then he said it has solar. And I said, what about the solar? And I'm, I'm just there, right, N bystander, normal, normal civilian. And he's like, well, it has 20 solar panels. It produces 12,000 kilowatt hours, which is 110% of the home's historical usage. It's a sun power, sun run, monthly lease. There's a slight annual increase. At 160 bucks a month, the normal utility rate would be 350. There's a purchase option after five years and every year thereafter. This was the agent in an open house. And I, my brother and I were just looking at each other like, wow, he's doing a good job, right? Like how many agents know how to speak that eloquently to someone walking into their open house? And I was like, dude, you just gave the best solar explanation in two minutes that I've heard in an open house. So we hope to give you a little bit of that knowledge today and just make you a little bit more equipped or at least be there to partner with you when you need help. Definitely. So we were talking a little earlier about obstacles that realtors come across. So this is what we've seen. Um, liens that need to be paid off, companies that go out of business and can't be reached. That's a common one that I hear from my real estate friends. Uh, buyers that are really just unsure about what they're coming up against when they're looking at different solar systems. Solar leases when a buyer wants to own their solar, a resistant buyer, and different contract types different system sizes, different payments. Solar can truly be quite complicated, right? So let me take the pressure off you. We've been in solar for nine years. We're still learning every day. We attend multiple trainings per week. We teach trainings countrywide in California as well. And we still don't know everything. And so I'll take the pressure off you that you really can't learn solar overnight, but that is why having a solar partner is very helpful. Um, so I wanted to give you quick three tips. When you come across a solar system, these are three things that you should always be asking from the listing agent or the seller of a home. You wanna ask for any pictures of visible equipment. The reason for this is if you find out that that company has gone out of business, there's only a couple manufacturers of the visible equipment that you see like Solar Edge and Enphase, those are common inverter brands. And if you are having trouble contacting the company that installed it, this is how you can um, figure out who installed those. You can contact the manufacturer and they can probably give you some insight as to who installed that. Also, the solar contract. You definitely want to get a hold of the solar contract. A lot of times you're asking for a lender contract and you have, you have an idea of what they're getting paid, but the contract is nowhere to be found. You have to ask for the contract because you want to know what kind of system it was, what payments they're paying, what warranties are in there. And the third thing that I often see that is not asked for that you want to get every single time you come across a solar home is their electric bill. Not the solar bill, but the electric bill. Because when someone goes solar, they still, like for the in this territory, for example, in Southern California, Edison, they're still gonna be connected to Edison and they do still have a small bill. That bill can be rather large if they don't have enough solar on it. So it's important as an agent that you know and we'll be able to see, are they also paying a very large supplemental bill to Edison? Is the solar not covering everything? And the only way you're gonna know is if you get a hold of the electric bill. So those three things are really, really important to get every single time. And here's the good news about what's going on right now. We are seeing less liens. Company-wide, nationwide, solar companies are not doing the first position liens anymore um, as much. And so you're gonna see a lot less of those. You are gonna be seeing more UCC1 fixture filings. Most of those are liftable upon refinance, liftable upon sale. Um, also, one thing that really helps if you do come across a solar home, as solar partners, if you guys need a contract review, I'm always happy to do one. It's very easy for me to take a look at a contract, send you a few bullet points that you can share with your seller or your buyer as far as is this system sized correctly? Is it a good, um, good value? Are they actually saving money and about how much? So I can actually give you a breakdown. So if you need solar contract reviews, 
definitely make sure to save my information. And I do that free of charge. It's really just all about making connections for us. Um, and the third thing, right, is having that solar partnership for a white glove customer service. If you do have a partnership with us, then if you have buyers that are taking over a solar system, you can introduce them to your solar partner and you can say, hey, here's Cynthia or here's Jonathan. If you ever have any questions in the future about your solar system, reach out to them. They can be a resource to you. Two, two points if I can add as well. Uh, so it, sometimes some agents would like to have the solar system looked at. So a diagnostic, a review, check the panels, check the inverter, make sure it's working. So we have contacts, um, electricians, licensed companies that'll do that for around 250 bucks. They'll go out and test the system, make sure it's working um, and do that. And yeah, like Cynthia said, I just had an agent the other day send me their solar agreement. Um, this you know, buyer doesn't think it's a good deal. He wants to know if there's a buyout option. So I went through the contract. I gave her a few bullet points and advised what to do. So we're happy to do that as well because every company is unique on the transferability. Some companies are out of business, so we just have a few resources to help uh, facilitate that. Awesome. Good point. And another point on that is if we are going to send someone out to diagnose someone's system, we really do want to make sure that that company is still in business first because we don't want to avoid any warranties by having a third party vendor um, service a solar system. You do want to make sure first that we're contacting the company that installed that solar system. So that part's really important. So before we get into um, the good stuff, I wanted to show you really quick how electricity is measured. So this is a snapshot of a Southern California Edison bill. When we're designing a solar system, we're looking at how many uni units of electricity does a home use? And on this bill, you can see from March to March, um, this homeowner used this amount of electricity, it's measured in KWH, kilowatt hours. You can see that March here, they consumed 803 kilowatt hours. So as a solar consultant, most solar consultants should be looking at this bill and seeing, okay, this is how much electricity they use. We know how much a solar system will produce and therefore how many panels to give them. So this is how we size solar. This is also how electricity is charged. So if you look at the very top, you can see this homeowner is paying at mid-peak 50 cents per kilowatt hour, off-peak 37 cents, and super off-peak 34 cents per unit of electricity. And so there's different prices um, per unit of electricity per kilowatt hour. So the kilowatt hour in electrical language and solar language is very important. How many kilowatt hours does a home consume? How many kilowatt hours will they need in addition once they get an electric car? once they get a pool. And if this is not read correctly, this is where you end up with homeowners that might have a supplemental end of year bill. Um, or let's talk about new construction homes, right? A lot of new construction homes, they only put eight to 12 panels on there. That's not enough for the average consumer of electricity. So it's only gonna cover a partial amount of the kilowatt hours. So the kilowatt hours are very important to determine um, the sizing of a solar system and to determine what is someone paying per kilowatt hour today and what would that look like with solar. So since 2003, national average utility prices have nearly doubled. Um, if we haven't noticed, has anyone noticed bills going up, not just electricity, <laughs> right? Everyone's laughing, My, yes. Our Starbucks is $7, <laughs> what the? F Mine was $8 for the ad shot this morning. So um, homeowners are hurting, our clients are hurting. Everything's gone up, not just electricity, but water and, and everything you can possibly imagine, right? Um, this year was especially enormous in the winter. Edison specifically had a very large increase. And so this summer we are expecting the average 2,500 square foot home to see bills in the thousand dollar range, which is pretty wild to think about. Um, so rates are going up. This is a never ending story. Jonathan, I don't know if you have anything to add to this. I think the next two slides show okay. the, the rates. Yeah, I was looking at this myself too. So in 2021, the price per kilowatt hour was 23 cents per unit of electricity. These are the current rates this coming summer. From 5 to 8 p.m., 
the average consumer is going to be paying 65 cents per unit of electricity. This is 2024. So when homeowners are saying, what am I doing wrong? Something's broken in my home. Something's not working. No, it's just that the same electricity they were using just a few years ago has nearly tripled. So if you have a consumer, if you have a homeowner that's using electricity between the hours of 5 to 8 this summer, they're going to be paying a pretty high price per kilowatt hour. I think this is important to be mindful of just because we're noticing that your clients are asking you guys like, hey, this two-story house in Fontana with a pool and a vaulted ceiling, and I'm thinking about a Tesla, like what could that electric bill be? You know, and it, it could literally be seven, eight hundred dollars now that they're going to be doing in the summertime. So it's just m important to be mindful of. And also we recommend don't run the pool pump between four to eight, five to nine. Don't charge the car between four to eight, five to nine. And some of these basic practices will help them um, no matter what. And with solar, the reason a lot of people did go solar is because the price per kilowatt hour is a lot less than this significantly less, even if they own it. So homeowners can go from what they pay now to paying less to own solar with nothing out of pocket, or they can choose to lease it too. The choice is really up to them. All right, so we wanted to talk to you about where the solar industry is going, what's the data. There are 130 million homes in the US, 90 million of them are eligible for solar. Only 3.5 million have solar. So we are at less than 5% penetration rate with solar in the US, which is pretty wild to think about. So we know that 95% of homes have yet to have gone solar. And the data is showing that people are at an all time need for solar, right? Bills are going up, solar is more affordable, increases. And in 2022, someone went solar every 44 seconds. In 2023, there was more solar installed than ever before. I'll just say too, in California, so this is nationwide, right? 5% uh, of homes in the United States have solar. A lot of reports say by 2030, we could be at 15%. So literally three times the solar installed in the last 40, 50 years could be done in the next six years. But California is around, I think 16% of the homes in California today do have solar. So this is what homeowners are saying. 69% of homeowners are saying, we do want more choices when it comes to energy and electricity. We've only had one choice for a very, very long time. 88%, this was surprising to me because not a lot of homeowners are really environmentally conscious, but 88% are still saying, if given the choice, they would support renewable energy. 62% are interested in solar for their home today. So this tells us, okay, there are 62% of homeowners out there that are interested in solar that haven't gone solar yet. So one in five homes, we're confident at least one in five homes in the next seven years will have solar. I snuck in this slide. Uh, it's something that we've been sharing in some of our trainings, but basically younger people um, are very, very conscious of climate change and the environment and being mindful um, of that. Is anyone a green certified realtor in here? Oh, nice, awesome too. Just a friendly reminder, uh, I've always advocated for this and Nancy and Sivar can get more information how to become a green certified realtor. There's a, a course. Okay, so cool. Nancy says there is a green realtor certification class or a class on the 16th and 17th. That's yeah, good info. Just tidbit. And then that's, that's just a great way to differentiate yourself on your business card, green certified realtor, and speaking to these things when you're selling homes and helping buyers as well. Totally agree. All right, Ooh. so new builds. Go ahead. Yeah, new builds and ADUs. Um, so this one's big. Has anyone shown new homes before that have solar? Yeah. Uh, do you guys recall, was the solar a good option, a buy, a lease, a battery? Elise, was that the only option? Yeah, was it a high price? Yeah, so it depends, right? Some of the builders have partnered with solar companies. Some of the builders have acquired solar companies. And when you're showing these homes, often there's like an option. The buyer can lease the solar on the new home. They could purchase cash. 
um, they could do one size or another size or possibly get a battery. And so Cynthia and I have a lot of realtors that reach out to us like, dude, we don't know what the heck they're telling us. We don't know if this is a good price. Um, can you help me? So just things to be mindful of if the new build is allowing them to purchase or lease, how many panels, how much electricity. And often, guys, I hate to say it, it's a bad deal. Like the price is 30 grand for 10 panels. Like it's the builders aren't passing on like a great smoking deal on solar. Um, so there's things to talk about for new builds, but legally new builds require solar now. So if you have clients that are building one new home on their lot or a few new homes, or if you're showing new homes, most likely it has to have solar, uh, which is something to know. Also ADUs, accessory dwelling units are very popular right now uh, just because Let's face it, home prices are expensive, rent's expensive, everything's expensive. So I'm seeing ADUs a lot. If you do a detached ADU, legally you have to get solar. And the solar can be on the ADU itself or it can be on the depends. primary structure. And it depends on the county and the city and the permit. Most um, jurisdictions are going to want it on the actual ADU in Southern California. I've seen both and yeah. yeah every city and jurisdiction changes so solar either has to be on the adu itself or on the main home but more often on the adu so this is very common as well a lot of you you know have big lots that you're selling adu accessible a lot of your clients are already looking into adus so likely they're already looking into solar as well but these are two new laws that have been put into place the last few years we're going to see this trend continue in other states um, and honestly, between solar and gas cars being outlawed, like clearly there's a trend here where they're just forcing these things on I us. Th I think another th important thing to mention when we're talking about new construction, ADU, or even a new construction home, is that we don't have actual data. The solar company who installs it don't, doesn't have actual data on what's being used. We can do a very good estimate to decide how many panels can go on there, but most of the time it's not gonna get the amount of panels it needs. So as a realtor, it's important to set the proper expectation for the homeowner. And if you're working with someone who's doing new construction, letting them know that there's not actual data, we're putting X amount of solar panels on it, but it's important for them to keep an eye on their electric bills to make sure they're not accruing a supplemental bill. Same thing when you're shopping with a buyer and you're coming up on new construction homes that you know for a fact only have eight to 12 panels on there. We know for the average consumer that's not going to be enough coverage of solar. So most likely the majority of their bill is going to be on the electric portion. So setting your customer up for success, your client up for success, and letting them know to keep an eye on their Edison bill on the electric bill is going to be very important. Question? Typically not, and the reason that new, and the question was, with new home builds, do, do they usually give you the option to add more? Usually they do not, and there's a reason for that because it's usually built in with the sale. The developers are trying to keep that price low, um, and adding too much is, and yeah, we'll price it out. Yeah, I, I've seen size one or size two, like one time, but, but often it's pretty restricted and if that homeowner has a family or they're going to get a jacuzzi they want to run the ac they want to charge a tesla six panels or ten panels is not going to satisfy their needs so often we'll get pulled into that and say hey what should i do now and then how can you come in later is is part of the they can always add panels later so that would be the remedy to that all right, and just a general explanation. And we are gonna take some questions at the end. We're just gonna move, so if you could just write those down and hold on to those. Um, as far as solar and how it works, just a really general explanation. Um, once we determine how many kilowatt hours a homeowner is using, that allows us to use our software to take decades of weather data to see the home's exact position on the earth, to see what each solar panel on each part of their roof is going to produce what, and what is going to have them hit their annual targets. And then we have a discussion with homeowners about, are you planning to add a pool? Are you planning to add a spa? Are you planning to get an electric car? Things that are going to increase your electricity usage. And we can determine how many more panels they would need. But once we determine how many panels are needed, the solar panels 
capture the sun energy. We have inverters that are converting that energy to the same electricity that's being used right now in this building. It's just coming from a clean, renewable source. And there are also batteries. So at nighttime, solar panels are not producing. That solar stores in a battery and um, that home is using power from the battery at night. Now, this is something that is newer with California. Now it is highly recommended to have batteries on solar systems. In the past, what would happen is the solar produced would get sold to the utility company. The utility company would credit the homeowner for it. And at night, the homeowner would use electricity from the, their electric utility because they gave them solar in the daytime. So it was giving them solar power and then taking electricity from the utility company. But now what we recommend instead is storing that in a battery because the utility companies are not paying the same anymore. So that was a big change that you may have heard of that happened in April of 2023. Um, utility companies used to pay one for one for the kilowatt hour and now they're giving an average of five cents per kilowatt hour so you guys are going to be seeing a lot more batteries coming to the market so let's talk about i don't know if you wanted to say anything else about that or the benefits of storage yeah that, that was a year ago it's called net metering three uh, so the utilities did change that if there's old solar systems that are out there though they are grandfathered in 15 to 20 years for those benefits and those do transfer. But as of a year ago in California in particular, the utilities stopped paying for excess energy. So now we really do need one, two, three batteries to store that energy during the day and then take it back at night. And for a little bit extra, these can be used as blackout protection as well. So when the grid goes down, um, these batteries kick on. This is also really helpful to know if you're showing homes along the, <clears throat> the foothills because you know if you're familiar when there's wind and storms and they're sparking on the electrical lines that can cause fires right we saw that in hawaii we saw that at the paradise fire in northern california so now the utilities are like oh it's windy it's dry it's hot we're going to shut down your power along the foothills because we don't want the liability so if you are showing homes along the foothills if you're dealing with that high net worth client the battery conversation, blackout conversation, or maybe generators is just something to be mindful of. Yeah, and there are a lot of benefits of battery storage. And just, we, Jonathan touched on this, but there are two types of batteries. Batteries don't always equal backup power protection. That's important to remember. So when you come across a battery, it might just be storage where the solar power stores in that battery so that the homeowner can self-consume their solar power at night, or a battery can be equipped to provide backup power. When you see a battery, it does not always mean it provides the home with backup power because that's what's new in California, that we're seeing a lot of homeowners invest in storage-only batteries, which means if the grid goes down, their solar also has to shut off unless they have the upgraded battery where they have backup power. So that's important to know. Don't always assume when you see a battery that it's going to provide the homeowner with backup power. You could always find out by seeing what the manufacturer is, like right here, for example. If this were clearer, you could see Solar Edge or you could see that that was Enphase. Um, so you could contact the manufacturer and find out in what mode is this battery and is it equipped for backup power. I, and I have a battery, uh, and it knows when there's a storm coming, so it retains the power, so that during that day or two storm, if there's a blackout, then I have power, which is really cool. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I do think that there's a day, I just want to implant, like, I think there's a day in five, ten years where most homes have batteries. Most homes have electric vehicles. And, like, that's the future that's going to be here. Um, that's what we call microgrids. So the utility can actually turn off a coal plant or a backup coal plant because there's enough batteries out there that during a blackout they can pull energy from. So I just, I really believe that between EVs and batteries, guys, batteries are newer for us, but trust me, in the near time future, like most homes will have batteries. Definitely. I think um, the statistics were batteries are up over 20% in sales this year so far. So whereas we were at less than 
3% last year. So this year going forward is going to be huge for batteries and solar, especially in California. And batteries come in different sizes. Typically, you will see them in increments of 10 kilowatt hours, meaning they store about 10 kilowatt hours. Um, that will generally not back up an entire home, but essential loads like a light, like lights, a refrigerator, a microwave, TV, not air conditioning. You would need a couple batteries at least to support air conditioning. A 20 kilowatt battery might support more electrical circuits in the home. A 30 kilowatt battery, uh, which is what we're seen more often now in California would be lights, refrigerator. Um, this is where you get into air conditioning backup. And it really all depends. We have to do a load calculation for each home to see what circuits are currently there, what can be backed up, what can the battery support. Um, so each home is different and each home gets a custom, a custom quote for that. Roofing, sexy topic here roofing does anyone know where this home in the middle is if you can guess the street i'm gonna get you a starbucks gift card is that around here what city it does look Close. like pasadena it's claremont so indian hill downtown um that is a roof that we did presidential composition shingle so it's an upgraded roof uh, for a nicer home smack dab in indian hill and the solar panels are on the back I, so every time I drive by it, I take a picture for myself. But the reason I want to bring up roofing, guys, is because your clients are likely going to replace their roof. And I want to say 30% of the clients we help go solar need a new roof. They go hand in hand. We can do roofing with solar and batteries and EV charger. We can finance it together. We could put it on the same contract. We can even possibly lease it together. Um, so a lot of times when a client's looking at a roof, they're also looking into solar at the same time. There's even added tax benefits. So if your clients are replacing the roof and they put solar panels on, they can also claim possibly a tax credit, talk to your CPA, um, on the roofing as well. And we're financing. I mean, I've just done two recently where they want roofing and solar all together financed. So this is very common. One or two things I would just let you know is in case you don't know, like there's obviously shingle roof. It's the most common. Um, there's concrete tiles here, which have a, a underlayment underneath, right? That underlayment can be 30, 40 years and might need to be replaced. So your inspectors don't lift up the concrete tile. But if that hasn't been touched for 40 years, that, that can be, you know, 10, 15, 18 thousand dollars of work. And I have often seen where the realtors just don't take the time to look at the roofing inspection at all. The leaks, the flashings, two years later, I'm getting a call, my roof has issues, da 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 why didn't I know this? I just got my house, and I'm like, well, your realtor didn't look at that inspection report at all because it was pretty torn up, and they probably should have tried to negotiate or get some credits or make advice at that time. So roofing is very important. Um, obviously, there's concrete tile, metal roofs, and some different roofing types. Uh, we also do ground mounts. So that's in Diamond Bar in the country, the gated community. I've done multiple systems there. And so when there's enough land, I've even done it on smaller homes in Diamond Bar. When there's enough land, we can put them on the ground, especially for complex clay tile, delicate uh, homes, things like that. And then lastly, when you look at maybe the report inspection report from your surveyors in the attic if you look at like the wood up above when you go into the attic you can see it might not be plywood it might be skip sheathing decking it might even be cedar wood shake that was there and they just put a layer of comp shingle on top of it that's not to code anymore um, and so then what needs to happen is you need to rip all that off put new plywood put new insulated barrier and put your new roofing. And I'm telling you, often than not, if they're doing roof, they're also looking into solar as well, or that roofing company is also pitching them on solar. So I really believe, you know, as a professional, if you bring the solution to your clients, the tax savings, a trusted referral company, otherwise they could really get taken advantage of by a door knocker 
a bad lease, a tax hero pace program. Yeah, and we have seen, that's a really good mention. We have seen a lot of companies, solar companies, that will just put a solar system on a pretty old roof. And it's putting the homeowner in a compromising position because then they're going to have issues with leaks possibly down the line in just a few years, then they're going to have to pay to remove the solar panels, redo their roof, and pay to have them reinstalled. And that's not a fun surprise for a lot of homeowners. And so there are solar companies that, that do it the right way. They do a proper roof inspection, make sure that there's not limited life on that roof. Um, and so that is why we find ourselves changing so many roofs, because we would rather our homeowners roof and solar live a long, happy life. And Jonathan is right about home inspectors. Many home inspectors will not lift the concrete tiles to check the paper underneath. That's so, so important. So if you do work with the inspectors, inspector that's a pro tip make sure they're checking your client's paper underneath those concrete tiles because that's really where the wear and tear is that's where issues come down and it would be very nice you know as a realtor to say hey by the way you know i had them double check the paper you're good it looks great or oh i found an issue you know here and so that's usually what we find with concrete roofs is um, new homeowners especially we come to find that the inspectors are not checking that so all right, let's go over some common contract types that we see in solar. We broke them into four different categories for you. So the two that are my personal favorites are cash and loan. These are some of the most popular over the last few years. We saw a lot of purchased solar system systems over the last few years. A lot of homeowners do choose to go with a zero down loan and we've seen interest rates rise just like in the real estate industry and so more people are now looking at ppas again ppas and leases were very very popular in the past they're having to come back because interest rates for financing solar are high so you are going to see a comeback of ppa and lease type products um, now one thing that I wanted to mention in the difference is typically when you purchase a solar system with cash or loan, you're getting access to the federal tax incentive, which is right now 30%. When homeowners go solar, 30% of their solar system is returned to them in the form of a federal tax credit, and that's a dollar per dollar tax credit. So for a lot of homeowners, and of course they have to consult with their CPA, but for a lot of homeowners that owe money this at tax time, this will deduct dollar per dollar against what they, what they owe on the federal. And for a lot of homeowners that are typically getting a federal return, they typically will get more in their returns. So it's a huge, huge value when the average tax credit is about 10 grand. On a PPA and lease, um, they the solar company keeps a tax credit. The homeowners do not. And so th those are the main differences. The warranties do differ from purchased products to non-purchased products. You guys will also see a lot of variations in customization of the PPA and the lease. Um, PPAs are easier to purchase. Typically, PPA solar will give the homeowner more options to purchase throughout the contract than a lease will. Any other differences you wanted to mention here? Yeah, there, there's quite a few nuances. When it comes to paid off solar, that's the best and that can add some home value. So if you're listing a home and it has paid off solar, that can add some home value compared to the neighbor that does not have a paid off solar system. Appraisers still fight on this a little bit. So the more documentation you can give your appraiser about that solar system, if it is paid off, will help your client's home value increase. And then depending on the loan or the rental lease, whatever you want to call it, um, there are different transfer terms with, with those products as well. I did want to also give one quick example on um, a cash system, right? So just on that tax credit, the other day I sent an email for a homeowner. They used quite a bit of energy. I think it was West Covina, needed a brand new electrical panel. They were going to get a battery. They were going to get a solar system. They were going to get the blackout protection. All, all in cash was like, let's just say 40 grand. And that's a 30% federal tax credit. So that's $12,000, 28 grand. Uh, to add home value, to eliminate your three, $4,000 Edison bill, to have blackout protection and to lock in your energy costs and avoid Edison for the next 20, 30 years. So I just wanted to give that example. But every home, every system, every size, every price is different. So we always have to consult for that. 
And here's the, here's the good news, too, about these contract types, right? Especially the loan, the PPA, and the lease. Almost 100% of the time, when you come ac across these three, you can be confident in knowing that that was secured at a price that they cannot pay their utility today. Most of the time, these are gonna be saving homeowners money versus what they would pay Edison or whatever utility they have for the same amount of electricity. And it's usually pretty substantial, right? A lot of PPAs and leases just a few years ago were locked in at a price of 13 to 15 cents per unit of electricity. You saw on the previous slides that the current rate of electricity at peak time is almost 75 cents. So that's a massive, massive savings. Two, two things I want to point out too. When it comes to that PPA lease, if you guys remember that Palm Springs example I said earlier, that agent knew how to articulate the details of the solar up front. And that was also communicated in the description notes as well. So if you're able to get ahead of it for your listings, it's really going to help out as well. And then if you're representing buyers, if you send us a copy of the lease and we're like, hey, this is a pretty good deal. Um, or we might say, you know, this is not the greatest deal. Why don't you negotiate? Why don't you ask for two years of monthly payments as an upfront credit to assume the lease? So we also t often recommend that as a negotiation tactic as well. It's pretty easy. Yeah, and again, going back to the loan too, one other thing is that most of the loans today used by solar companies, they're not doing a first that attaches to the mortgage. They're doing UCC1 fixture filings. Most solar lenders work very similarly where you can pay a few hundred dollars to have that lifted. A lot of agents aren't knowing that. So sometimes I need to work with one of my real estate partners to tell the listing agent, hey, yes, this, this UCC1 is liftable. Um, um, so that you can transfer the payment because they're trying to pay it off, which you can. You know, they can pay it off and just include it in the price of the home, but most of them are now liftable, um, and it just really depends. But if it's a UCC one in a lot of cases, it's going to be a lot easier. Another thing you want to be aware of if you come across a solar loan that you may have already noticed is if it's a recently purchased solar system with a loan, it always starts at a lower payment, but if the homeowner didn't apply their federal tax incentive back in, the payment goes up again. And so that's really important to know because sometimes um, the agent will think that the payment is $200, but it goes up at month 19 to $300. So it's important to take a really good look at that loan contract and see if they made that pay down payment because if not, then the payment most likely is going to go up. Do you have anything else on this? I was just going to say, the sooner you start looking into the solar transferability or lifting the UCC1, the better. The escrow company will know how to help. You can get a transfer agent assigned to you if the solar company's good. Often we'll get asked in the last mile, escrow's trying to close, and it's like, this solar company's not lifting the UCC1. So the sooner, the better. That you Most of them take about... 30 days, which is the time of an escrow. So it is really, really important to start at the very beginning. Very good tip. So we're going to take a quick look at a lease contract and just a few things that you want to take a look at if you're doing a review yourself. It's always nice on a solar contract, we'll take this lease as an example, to see what was the initial price that this contract started at per kilowatt hour. Typically, that will be listed on a solar contract. For example, this one started at 20 cents. And we know now what we know, which is the current rate of electricity is almost 75 cents at peak, 40 cents on average last year in 2023, right? So even if we were going off 2023 numbers, the average rate of electricity for Southern California Edison was 40 cents, but we were coming up on this lease contract that's fixed at 20 cents. That's a 50% savings right off the bat. So right away, you know, wow, this homeowner is gonna save a lot if they adopt this lease contract. Then you wanna see, is there a payment escalator? A lot of companies on leases and PPAs, they have payment escalators where the price goes up 1.9% per year, 2.5%. Now we're seeing 3.5%, which is new. Um, now you wanna look for the schedule of payments in the contract to see, okay, what year is this lease contract in? What are they paying this year if there is a price escalator? Because that's important too. They may have started at 20 cents, but the price may have escalated and now it's a little higher. It's still gonna be a lot less 
than what their utility would be, right? Because they're not going up 6, 10, 20% like the electric companies. It's only 2.9, 3.5, but you do just want to make your buyer aware. And then again, the other thing we want to do, right, is get a copy of the electric bill because we want to see their solar, once some, someone goes solar, their Edison bill should look like this. Their solar should be producing more power than what they're using, sending power back to the grid. And this is very important to look at on their electric bill is to see, are there year to date charges? There should be zero there. If you see a number there, then that means that this home is not fully supported by that solar system and that's okay. They're just gonna pay a supplemental bill so that you wanna let your buyer know, hey, this solar doesn't cover everything so you're paying X percentage to solar and you're paying 20% to Edison. And this is where you can see that every Edison bill, we're just using Edison as an example, will have this here where it shows the year to date charges. Now you can see here, it'll be numbered. This says net energy metering month number five. When they get to month 12, that is when a homeowner trues up with the utility. That means whatever number is there, at, at month number 12 is what they're gonna owe, or sometimes there's a credit there. Sometimes the utility company owes a customer, which we're always happy to see that. So we're always happy to see year-to-date charges, zero dollars, and we're happy to see credits, right? This one has a credit, year-to-date credit of $695 to the homeowner. That's always really good news. So you just wanna keep an eye on that. Anything here? All right, so we wanted to go over, we know a lot of our realtor friends, they come in at the end of a solar transaction when someone's ready to sell the house, and we don't really get to see why a homeowner would even say yes to solar in the beginning. So we just wanted to enlighten you for a second. Most homeowners go solar with zero down financing, meaning they're not paying any money out of pocket. A lot of people think solar is really expensive. It actually costs nothing to make the switch to solar, whether they choose a PPA, a lease, or to finance their solar, all of those programs are no money out of pocket. On top of that, they get the 30% federal tax incentive, which was just extended for over a decade. And so this will give them a huge tax credit. So if you're looking for homeowners that just spent a lot of money, right, on a home purchase, and they could use some money back into their, back in their pockets, a federal tax incentive is a great way to do that. Besides that, Fannie Mae made it so that um, appraisers have to include the price of solar now. And so this will immediately increase the value of your, of your home. Depends on what market we're talking about, and it has to be paid off solar. And it's clean, renewable energy. If given the choice, if homeowners were to choose between two exact homes, one has clean, renewable energy with solar and one has dirty energy, they would choose clean, renewable energy. So more people are now aware that there's a cleaner, greener choice. The 30% federal tax credit, like I said, is huge. A lot of people ask, what other incentives are there? Well, there's immediate savings, there's long-term savings, and then there's the federal tax credit. So those are the three main, main ones. And we wanted to show you a few examples of real customers that financed their solar system last year and what that looks like number-wise, right? So these are last year's numbers, and these I all took from Southern California Edison Territory since that's where we're at currently. So this homeowner was paying $687 for no money down, no money out of pocket. They did a solar finance, and instead of paying $0.35 cents per unit of electricity, which is what they paid last year, they're going to pay $0.18 cents per unit. That comes to a solar payment of $382. And so immediately, they saved over $300 a month by making the switch to solar, and that was a system that covered all of their electricity, and we upgraded their main electrical panel and their federal tax credit was $22,000. So this homeowner specifically typically owes that tax time, so they owed $22,000 less on their federal tax return. They were very, very happy. This homeowner is more what we see as an average, went from a payment of 353 to 233, so it was $100 savings. We actually did a main panel upgrade for them and an electric vehicle charger, so there was a smaller gap in savings than over here. But they still um, saved over $100, 
and federal tax credit $14,000. They bought their son a car with that, which was really cool to see. Um, so here you could see 25 year savings too. What do they avoid by going solar? Here this homeowner is set to save $96,000 assuming the electric company only goes up 5% per year, which they do not, they go up much more than 5% per year. This one over here, over $200,000 in savings over 25 years by just making the switch to solar. And then lastly, this homeowner over here had a full re-roof in their contract. So again, a smaller gap in savings, but they put, they went solar and got a brand new roof for less money than they were paying the electric company. So they went for, from a payment of 376 to 304 and got a $13,000 tax credit. And, and these monthly payments for the solar are fixed too, right? They're, those aren't gonna change as the utility continues to go up. Correct, yes. So these are all ownership um, because that's what was more common last year. And the ownership payments do not go up in price for this specific, for these specific examples. They stay the same. And the homeowner, instead of throwing that money away to the utility, they're really paying themselves, right? Because they swap their liability of a bill into an asset, and they're putting money back into their pockets. And these loans, too, can be paid off. So that's why a lot of homeowners chose to own their solar. Right now, in t with today's prices, they can actually lease their solar system or go with the PPA for even less than these numbers. So that's why we're seeing um, a resurgence of those type of contracts. Just to throw out a pro tip too, we've helped many, many agents. We have one in particular. She's a top performer nationwide at her brokerage. And she took every Monday evening to call 20 of her clients. And she went solar and was happy. And then she helped her mom go solar. So as she's calling back her clients every Monday, she's realizing 30 to 40% when she's checking in, how are you doing? How's the family? How's the loan? Yada, yada. Hey, by the way, are you looking into solar? Have you already got door knock like all my other clients? Because I went solar. My mom went solar. Some of my other clients got solar. <clears throat> This is something you really should look into. So she found that 30 to 40% of her clients were already saying yes. And one in four was already getting it. So it's just a really great touch point as the professional uh, to be able to circle back to them, get more referrals for your business. And then, of course, we have referral options as well. Yeah, really good mention. And I'll share a story, too. I had someone knock on my door a couple months ago trying to sell me solar and I broke his heart and let him know I sold solar and I already had solar on my house. But the deal that he was trying to pitch me was so bad that it, A, it would not have covered my entire bill. He didn't know about adding battery storage, but he's out there in neighborhoods knocking doors with just lack of education. I actually made him sit there with me for 15 minutes so I could show him how to sell solar responsibly. These are people that are knocking on homeowners' doors, and not all of them are, are bad. Let me tell you, we have really good door knockers, reputable in our company too, that are very well trained, but not all of them are, are good. As entry level solar representatives, usually they start off door knocking, and he confided in me that his company was going out of business, and he's still out there signing up people. And then after we spoke, I thought maybe he would pack up and go home and he went to go and try and sell my neighbor solar. So all this to say, right, this is part of the reason why we're out here connecting with real estate agents, spreading education, not only to spread education, but also to be a trusted resource because we know how to do solar the right way and it's not always done the right way out there. And a lot of people aren't properly educated on how to sell solar responsibly and how to keep up with the current updates that are going on locally and, and nationally as well. So we want to share with you what makes our company special really quickly. Uh, one of the things that attracted me initially was seeing that they have a 30-year warranty when they purchase a solar system. So this truly protects homeowners and gives them the best protection in the solar industry parts, labor, and roof penetrations. So when a homeowner goes solar with us, they're properly protected. And it's a transferable warranty as well. 
Besides that, this company we work with is A-plus rated on the BBB. For four years in a row, they've ranked on the Inc. 5000 magazine as one of the most promising, fastest growing companies in America. That's over 30 million businesses, not just solar businesses, but businesses in general. We're also a certified B Corporation which is a very hard seal to get. It shows that we do business with integrity. We're transparent with our books. It was very hard to get that, very hard to keep it, and not many solar companies have it. So something we're very proud of. We're five-star rated on Google as well. Um, also just a very solid company. I come from 15 years of customer service before solar, and it's very important that our clients return to us, that they're happy and they have good experiences. So. Very good customer service as well. For many of our clients and for our realtor partners as well, we do have an ambassador program that is completely free to join. If you are looking to refer a client, it's $1,000 um, that you would get once they install. And there are opportunities to earn more. If you guys want to onboard as an official partner, um, you can earn more with that. And this is a QR code. So if you scan that, that will take you to the ambassador sign up link where you can sign up to be an ambassador. Please feel free to um, give me a follow, save my email, text me if you have more questions. We are going to open it up now for some questions. Did you have anything else on the ambassador program? Yeah, just a minute, uh, you know, of course, we want to be your nationwide partner. Of course, you want to always be able to review contracts um, and help you and help your clients. At the end of the day, we just want to be that value. If you do want to explore a little bit more of a relationship, if you scan that, you know, Cynthia, you can be her free thousand dollar referral partner. That's pretty easy. Um, and then if you do want to get a little bit more involved, like that real estate agent in Ranch Cucamonga I was mentioning, she became a seller partner just referring and she did make about 80 to 90 grand in one year just referring. So there are income options and I just say that because, you know, especially in this industry um, with real estate and the commission change coming, like we're looking for agents that are looking for side opportunities. Some of you may offer your clients AstroTurf. Some of you may link up with other added services. So um, at the very least, we want to be your partner, but we do have one or two referral options. And yeah, we can definitely open it up for questions and then we'll hang out further and we're always available to help. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, let's open it up for questions and let's see um, anything on the solar market, equipment, anything, yes. So for most solar companies, um, maintenance includes repair and maintenance, right? Which means anything defective with the equipment, if anything needs to be repaired or replaced, that's usually fully covered by a solar company warranty. With us, it's covered for 30 years. Maintenance that is not included if you purchase your solar system is usually forces of nature. So we're talking about, this is very important. I'm so glad you brought this up because when a homeowner purchases their solar system, they should add their panels to their homeowner's insurance policy because most purchased solar systems do warranties do not protect against fire, hail damage, um, outside damage, right? Forces of nature. And so if you are working with the client and you adopt a solar system, if it's purchased, make sure that they also have the solar system covered in the homeowner's insurance um, warranty. I, I always, real quick, I always say too, um, there really is no maintenance except you could get it cleaned once a year, once every other year. It's not required. Like the rain will give it a little bit of a rinse. It's good to do at least every few years. S depending on the area, the winds, the dust, sometimes there's fires and it leaves the ash. Um, so we have two or three recommendations locally that will get up there with deionized water um, and a soft bristle and just give them a nice little scrub down. And then you will see a boost in productivity. So I do recommend doing that once a year, once every other year. Yeah, I would say once a year, but most solar companies will not go out and wash the panels, so that typically is an investment. And it's pretty inexpensive. For a one-story home, typically you're looking at about $100 to have it professionally washed, so it's pretty affordable. And any other questions? Two-story homes are typically a little bit more from what I, I see, and it also depends on how many solar panels you have. Most uh, cleaning companies will charge a little bit more. I personally live, you uh, spoke about wind. I live in Fontana, so it's very, very windy there. <laughs> and I live in like the windiest part. And I haven't, I haven't cleaned my personal solar panels in over my, two years. 
and pa- they are they are fine. We we have had a good amount of rain spread out throughout the year, so it's been okay. You should. Yeah. My parents do like once a year, and that hundred and fifty two hundred dollar expense for the cleaner, they'll notice they get you know two hundred dollars more of electricity from that more solar production. system. So yeah, it's it's pretty close. Once a year would be a good recommendation in the dry season. Yeah, and there are a lot of people that will try to clean them themselves, which we we never recommend. But, you know, if they are going to try to clean them themselves, just you don't want to hit them with cold water on a hot day. It's tempered glass. So they can get little micro cracks. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes. You know, that's a common question we get, how much is the average expense? And it's almost like asking what the average expense is to buy a home. It just really depends on the size of the solar system that's needed for the client. Um, Was that your example? Go ahead. I don't know if if she had roofing, but like in in some of my examples, even this last week or two, the roofing can be as low as 14,500. And it, it can, like recently I had one of those 23,000, but you know, again, square footage, um, amount of size of the home, do they want the fascia board replaced? Do they need new plywood? So these are all variables, right? And if we're talking 4,000 square foot home, that, that totally throws it off. Um, if we're talking just underneath the concrete tiles, redoing the underlayment, so lifting the tiles, putting new paper, right. um, and then putting the tiles back, that's a little bit less, but that's mm-hmm. a different cost as well. So it just really depends on the size of the home and the roofing material. That answered your yeah. question. Yeah, and so what we... N- no, so the average, I mean, let's take a 2,000 square foot home, one story, for example, maybe. Oh, okay. I, I see. would say roof and solar just on an average home, you know, just to give you a number would, would probably be around 50 to 65 grand, both combined solar battery, possible electrical panel and roofing all in one. We're talking about the average. But again, size. this is just, I'm just, yeah, it, it, that would be less for roofing because it's two stories and half the roof. And so this is why for any homeowner that's looking for actual numbers, we do a zoom consultation we get their exact numbers. It can vary greatly, you guys. It can, you know, we have homeowners that need 10 solar panels. We have some that need over 100. If, if you want to so send us really an depends. address or an Edison bill, like give us a few days, we'll spit that right back We can back give to you, you an no example. Yeah, yeah, we can send you an example. Yes, sir. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Got it. I, I understand. Yeah. So the question is just asking for like, um, let's take a 2000 square foot average home that's two story. The roof is going to be about 12 grand for a two story 2000 square foot home uh, for 50 grand. So we're talking about a comp shingle roof, composition shingle. If you're looking at a 2000 square foot house that has two stories, that's half the amount of roof space. So that's what we see on average. That would be cheap. Um, that, that would, would be, be cheaper. Yeah. That would be a comp year. shingle. Yeah. I mean, that's on average. Yeah. To be honest, like I even just say, Hey, 15 to 30 grand, you know, like, it depends, yeah. It depends, depends on what the amount type. Of work. Depends There's what else we're There's too many variables doing. to just yeah. vaguely give that. Like I just did one that was fourteen thousand eight hundred, but now I have one that's twenty three thousand. Like same size home, might need more plywood, might have more layers. They wanted fascia board, so it just it really varies 
Um, it's like if someone asked me how much is HVAC, Jonathan, I'd be like, man, it's probably going to be between eight and 18 grand, depending on the duct work and the yeah. sear rating and the condenser. Here's two contacts. Like, I don't freaking know. So we just keep it vague, and as soon as we have the data, then we can dig in and yeah, ask the right questions. When, yeah, typically when we have an electric bill for a homeowner and we have the nuances of their specific roof, we can turn around a quote within 24 hours or less, sometimes hours. Um, so it's just a matter of working with actual data. It can vary greatly. And they may want to finance it. They may want to lease right, it. Right, it depends, so. right, if they want to finance it or lease it, exactly, or pay cash for it. They're all, all different numbers. Yes, sir. Right. True. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. The market average would be about 15 grand, 15 grand. Yeah. Cash. If I'm assuming it's cash. Just solar. Just they solar. They don't need an electrical right. panel. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But just to reiterate again, most people finance at zero down so they get a low monthly or... 50 to 60% of people are leasing today, so that's a right. totally different monthly. So communicating a dollar amount is just going to seem so luminous to them. Like, it's not going to be, yeah, but, right. but it'd be a good idea to tell them. Yeah. yeah. Good questions. Anyone else? So the question was the three tips again, what should we be getting with every solar home? And the first thing was photos of any visible equipment so you can see who the manufacturers are, the electric bill, and the solar contract. There should still be a solar contract. Yes, there should always be a solar contract. If the company's in business, yeah. A lot, just to be frank, a lot of smaller companies are out of business. So if you can get the contract, mm -hmm. um, and if right, yeah, it depends. So to show the question is to show the value of a solar system. Um, if it's a lease or a PPA contract, do you want to see what the monthly price is, what the price of the kilowatt hour is? If it's a cash or own contract, do you want to see what the total value of the solar system is? And that'll give you the value of, of what it was. And we can give a rough value too. I mean, it's not going to hold a ton of weight. There's one or two third party providers out there, but it just hasn't gained enough traction to be a formal measuring stick yet. But I've been asked a few times, like, hey, what would you value this at, this six-year-old system with 20 panels? And we can kind of loosely give you our valuation. We're, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, good, good questions. And then, again, if any of you are looking for a solar contract evaluation, definitely reach out. If you come across a home that has solar on it, we are happy to give you a breakdown of our observations. Do we see if the system is sized appropriately? What is the approximate savings by a buyer adopting this system? Even if you're the listing agent, we can give you maybe just a few bullet points to share with each potential buyer. And I've, like the Crumb Bakers, CG Realtors in Claremont, like I've literally talked to their buyer and said, hey, look, you, you said you're coming from a condo. Uh, now you're getting this two-story home. This home has a pool. Are you planning on an EV? Like, and so I walk them through, like, there's going to be a lot of solar on it. Maybe now you can get the EV, and you're used to a 250 build. Guys, this could be five, 600 in the summer, so this $200 monthly solar payment's not bad. So that's, we do that for some of our favorite people, too. Yeah, I have a friend that has that. The, the easy answer is no. Um, I can pro we can provide one or two contacts to do a diagnostic, check it, test it. You know, maybe the inverter needs to be replaced. So we have a few of those contacts. We even have a repair company or two that we can advise you could use as well. Um, but that would really be the extent of it. We're happy to have that conversation, provide those resources, trying to gain an ambassador, but that's really it, yeah. Yeah, it happens pretty often. So the question um, for anyone who might be watching online was, can we adopt an abandoned solar equipment or contract? And 
Technically, no, but Jonathan, like he mentioned, we have contacts that we could connect to the homeowner if they just need regular service, need to make sure the system is operating. And if you capture um, any visible equipment, again, we can contact the manufacturer and see if there's anything that they can do to help power on that system if it's not working. No, nothing exists like that. We can build industry. around it, though. So if they wanted to add more panels, we can absolutely do that. It's, it's a second system, essentially. So, it, yeah. Good question. So the question is, if we add on more panels to a, a home that already has solar panels, does it void warranties? The answer is no, because technically it's considered a second system. So we're not tying in or touching the existing system. That system is producing power and it's going into the main panel and into the home. We're adding a second system and that's producing more power and it's tying directly into the main panel. You can physically connect equipment, but we don't, we're not doing that. So it's technically considered a second system and, and just ju just to clear it's a whole different system the roof yeah i think that's what she was asking uh -huh. i'll take that okay. yeah so she was referring to the solar system that's already there but the roof i I've, i know what you were saying so where we penetrate the roof we then give a 30-year warranty on that area of the roof um, so we, we take the liability and risk for any penetrations in that roofing area. So that area is not covered under their roof warranty anymore, technically. Um, I'll give you one more example. Someone gets a brand new roof across the street here and we put solar on half of it. Well, that half of the roof is no longer under that roofer warranty they just bought last week. So we now have a 30 year warranty in that area. Any issues from the, our penetrations and our equipment, we will come out and warrant for 30 years. The other part of the roof, though, should still be honored by the roofer. I think Sun Power. That's a good question. Yeah, definitely. So uh, we started with Solar City. Solar City. Solar Tesla. City was the. Uh, she asked, "Why are we with our third company?" So, um, for that very reason, a lot of companies, as big as they are, they go out of business, they sell off. We were with Solar City initially, and we they were the number one solar company in the U.S. Right, and then they sold to Tesla. And then Tesla wasn't doing so well. Let's just say we moved on to Sunrun, which has the largest footprint in the country. And you come to find out, especially us as solar professionals, that the warranty that protects homeowners is very important. So our warranty protects homeowners against company dissolve. They created it as a third party so that it could survive the company should it decide to sell off, to transfer. And their, to their, their pricing is higher and they don't have the best equipment. Um, it's like retail in a box, right? You go into Costco, you get the price, it's, it's sky mm -hmm. high. So we didn't know what we didn't know, right? It's kind of like if you're a lender, a realtor, like you start at the big box lender and you offer this crazy high price or you start at Keller to get the education and you're like, man, I could go over here to this flat fee and pass on more credits to my clients. Or mm -hmm. now I'm a broker because I've been doing it nine years and now I have two options to give my clients the best options because Sunrun's price sucked. They were paying me commission to force leases down people's throats. They didn't do ground mounts and they disqualified a lot of my jobs. So as professionals, I think we've graduated to that level where it's like, we want to be the best nationwide right. broker now. Yeah, currently, you know, having been in the industry for a while, you get to learn how to best serve your client and how to give them the best options. So where we're currently at, we offer better quality equipment at better pricing with a better warranty. And ultimately, it's all about taking care of the client. So that's why. Better pizza, Papa John's. And better what? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sixty, yeah. I was gonna say sixty. Is 
Is it a lease or a tax hero program? With some power, sun run. Love to take a look at that. It's one. It's probably one of those two. Sun Nova. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's why customer service matters very, very much. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you're right. There is some struggles like we, we led with, and that's why we've been doing this nine years and why we want to help and send us that Sonova contract and why a lot of people whose companies go out of business reach out to us. Um, and yeah, I totally hear you. The regulation is coming more so. Like we don't have a NAR, CAR like license. It's a little unregulated. Our industry is going through eyeballs and regulation now to get to that level. So um, that's the current reality. I really hope it improves because ethics and integrity and everything we do is at the core of, of why we're successful. Um, and yeah, I think we'll help yeah. you with that. Yeah, so I think you're referring to like a hero pace tax lien program where you just have to have equity in the home to finance solar roof, HVAC. This was very common maybe eight, ten years ago. Um, it's v seldomly used nowadays. Often those contractors didn't give a great deal. When done right, we've each done two or three in our nine years, just to put in perspective. It's very unique to someone that has equity, that doesn't have a good credit score. We're able to put a good price into their taxes, uh, a fair price, and then there's some additional tax write-offs because it technically is now part of the tax bill. So when done right, and then you have to disclose that at refinance or sale, that sucker will have to get paid off. So if you want to refinance in the next two or three years, I'm not going to give you a tax hero pay lien. And so th these are just things that we do you know, as professionals to make sure it's right fit for the client. So not anymore? We still have it. Um, I'm sorry, so with solar, it is exempt from increasing the property taxes. The only time that you'll see property taxes rise is when they have a product, a finance product, where it was actually the payment was put into the property taxes. It can be reassessed for a new owner, but not the current owner, that is the law. But really good questions, you guys. We are at time, so we're gonna hit, go ahead and conclude our class today for today for those that are in person we are going to stay and hang out if you have any more questions but thank you all so much for coming and look forward to connecting with many of you guys thank, thank you. you guys appreciate it